Hey everyone! It's officially spooky season, and this is the first somewhat relevant video that I have. Uh, not one I expected to make. This is actually going to be a little bit different. Today we're going to be looking into Loeb, or Loab, whatever you want to call her. One of the first reasons I really wanted to do this is I really like AI art. It's one of those technologies that's brand new and trailblazing, and a lot of people don't really understand yet how it works. I wanted to make a video that kind of breaks down the context of how something like Loeb gets created why she exists, and hopefully through that you'll have a better understanding of why we shouldn't be afraid of stuff like this. It would have been a lot easier to make a scary video containing Loeb. Almost anything you create is going to come out really macabre, and it's definitely the time of year for that. I decided to go this direction because I really want people to embrace AI and AI art. I feel like a lot of people are going to be scared of it because it's one of those things that people aren't really understanding. I'm not going to go too deep into the details because there's already plenty of videos and plenty of articles surrounding what Loeb is, how she was created, and all those things. I'm going to suffice it to say, she is the image that comes up when you search for specific negative prompts. So what I plan on focusing this video on is prompting, and explaining how the algorithm decides what to display, depending on the context. As much as it might seem like a picture example might be the best way to do this, I think text is actually easier to understand. So I'm going to show you with Novel AI. In the same way that Stable Diffusion can generate images based on your text, Novel AI can generate more text based on your text. Now I don't have the option here of using a negative prompt and showing you what the most opposite thing is, but this should be a very easy way of displaying what the most connected biases are within the context of the model. True randomness doesn't actually exist within the context of computers. There's things that emulate it and come close. A program is a program. It's a series of instructions. There's no ghost in the machine. There's no thinking going on behind the scenes. The output is the expected output of the algorithm every single time. I found the easiest way to show you here was to drop the output length to the minimum and then change the randomness from the lowest to the absolute highest. To simplify what randomness means in this context, it might almost seem as if it's generating new seeds for you, but what it's actually doing is deviating further and further from the most common thing. So with the randomness dropped almost to zero, what we see here is almost the exact same output every single time. And it stands to reason that if we were at zero, we would have the exacting output. And when we kick it up a notch and drop it to the maximum level of randomness, we're going to deviate really far away from the most common stuff. Using a clip out of my Voyage video, you can see how these AI tools kind of visually demonstrated what I'm talking about. These machine learning algorithms are designed to emulate thinking, and they're designed to emulate randomness. If you were to look at a machine learning model and the way that it's interconnected, it would probably look a lot like the human brain, where everything is connected in a very strange spider web of neurons. It's a really strange way of databasing things, where concepts, words, and in our case, with Loeb, we have pictures and they connect things together within this model file. So you could ask who is Loeb, but there is no answer to that question. The computer doesn't know the answer to that either. The original image of Loeb was simply the computer's response to a prompt that didn't make any sense. A negative prompt gives us the ability to ask the computer about the opposite, what is the most uncommon or least biased thing. And it's designed in a way that makes perfect sense. We type in a prompt and we get back expected results. It's not very often where we need the least relevant thing for whatever we're typing in. And if I'm being honest, it's not an entirely useful thing to do. As an example, this is what Stable Diffusion looks at as a man being stabbed. The opposite of a man being stabbed is apparently this iPhone screen or something. Using the same seed, this is blue water. And here is the opposite of blue water, which is a weird thing in a frame. Now if you expected red water, or something that was a little bit more exacting as to the actual opposites of the words blue and water, you might be misunderstanding how these connections work. I can't exactly type good into the negative prompt and end up with the embodiment of evil as my result. If I were to ask you what the furthest thing from your mind is, and you gave me an answer, we would have a result. What makes this a little bit on the creepy side is that the computer will generate the same result every single time because of the algorithm. Alright, so the negative prompts, the story of the creation of Loeb, all of that stuff, it's been done to death. When we look at Loeb, we see a certain thing. We have to ask ourselves, what does this model see when it breaks down Loeb, and what connections does it make? And therein lies the second half of our problem, is that the Loeb image is being used in image-to-image, -image, which is now context for the model. 
When that original image was generated, it was basically randomized output, the furthest thing from the computer's mind given the prompt. But if we take that creepy lady image and we start using image to image, now we're using creepy lady context mixed with prompts and we have a whole different ball of worms. When you and I look at an image, there's feelings that get invoked and things like that. The computer sees it very differently. It breaks down the image into basic parts and it starts looking at it in ways that I'm not really going to describe here. I think the important takeaway is that when the computer sees Logue, it does see what we see. It sees this terrifying creature lady and it uses that context in whatever you decide to do with her. You can see the results here of the interrogate feature, which is something, by the way, that you can have on the GUI version of Stable Diffusion. If you haven't already seen my video, check out that link. And as painful as it is for me to make an anti-spooky video, especially this time of year, I just couldn't let people be afraid of this budding new technology. Our lack of understanding surrounding AI is going to seem like magic for a long time. You're going to hear a lot of rumors about artificial intelligence coming alive. And I'm not saying it won't at some point, but it's not going to be anytime soon. We're not there yet. In conclusion, I'll leave you with the image of red water filtered through image to image without any additional prompting whatsoever. This is just a computer thinking, if you want to look at it that way. And if I take that same image and I interrogate it, it thinks it's a painting of a woman with a bird on her shoulder and a bird on her shoulder in a gold frame. So take that for what it is. I do apologize to the big Loeb fans out there who were looking forward to more creepy content from her. Given the way that this context works, I have a feeling she won't be the last we discover in the machine. If you made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate your time. And as always, thanks for watching.